Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're uh, joining from, uh, or wherever, whenever you're listening to this later. So, uh, my name's uh, Tupton Temba, and I'm from the United Kingdom, and I study here in India, in Sarah Jay University, in the south of India. And so now I'm I'm staying at Tashita in Delhi, where I am now. Uh, I've been having some medical procedure, so I'm just here uh, for that and recuperating here at uh, Tashita Meditation Center. So this is my first time to lead the meditation online for Tashita. So I apologize for any uh, complications that may arise. So we just take a moment to settle into our environment and into uh, this uh, the position of where we are seated. So we should first find a, a quiet and peaceful environment where we can do our meditation session free from as much distraction as possible. If we live in the city, that can be quite difficult. Um, so to the best of our ability, we should try and make the environment where we are as conducive for our meditation practice as possible. So once we've found that suitable place, then we should find a, a suitable uh, place to be seated so whether that be uh, traditionally on a on a cushion, on the floor, or on a mat, or if we're not able to, like myself, sitting on a chair. Um, so just make sure that we're. Uh, so if we're sitting on the floor on a cushion, we should be uh, as best we can to sit in the uh, cross leg position as we call the lotus lotus position with our legs folded. And there's various ways we can uh, position our legs in the cross leg uh, position, depending on our flexibility. But we need to find a position that's going to be comfortable for the period of the session that we intend to, to, to sit for. Um, so don't kind of be over ambitious in your position and sit in a position that's very uh, looks very good and follows the kind of traditional sense but then we get agitated or we feel uncomfortable and we're not able to focus so that's kind of pointless um, so then if we're seated on a chair then we should be seated towards the the front of the chair um, not that we're about to fall off it, but not so that we're sat right back uh, with our back leaning against the back of the chair. We should be supporting our own uh, posture. So we should be seated with our back up straight <clears throat> and our shoulders also uh, relaxed but and rounded, but they should also be uh, kind of not slouched forward. So we should have a nice upright position as if we're being uh, kind of pulled gently upwards so make sure that our body is erect and our head should be tilted just slightly forward not too far down otherwise we will feel sleepy and not too uh, upright or because that will make us feel excited which will Either extremes will interfere with our meditative concentration. And then our arms, so our shoulders rounded, relaxed, and then our arms uh, with our uh, rounded, with our hands resting on our lap, if we can. Otherwise, if you're seated on a chair, it's maybe more, more comfortable to have them resting on your knees. But the arms should be, the elbows should be. Uh, rounded and, and bent 
at the elbows so that they uh, stick um, point outwards slightly so that we have some circulation around the unders of our arms. This helps to, to keep the body fresh to avoid any any uh, drowsiness to, to creep in. So we want to keep our body comfortable, but also relaxed, but then not in a, in a position that's going to cause us to feel sleepy. So then uh, then the, the, the right palm of our hand should be on top of the left, and the, the thumbs should be just gently touching one another. We should try to avoid them uh, pressing against each other that will cause some tension in our uh, joints. And then going back to the head, so with the finding the the right position of the head, not too far tilted down, not too far uh, upwards. And our eyes should just be lightly closed, just so that we can just so that we can just uh have some light entering into our eyes that helps to keep our awareness bright and aware and alert and then our mouth should be closed but not uh contracted or tensioned in any way so just kind of relaxed and our tongue resting on the upper palate behind the the front upper teeth this just helps to alleviate the need or the urge to swallow, which can also disturb our concentration. And then we're just going to settle into that comfortable position that we found ourselves. And just take three deep but relaxed breaths in. And out. In. And out. And then just allow your breath to settle into its normal, comfortable pattern. And then just bring your awareness gently onto that breath, the rhythm of our breath, and be aware of the in-breaths and out-breaths. So you can focus your attention on your nostrils, And the sensation of the breath entering and leaving the nostrils. Or you can focus on your chest area and feel that breath filling your lungs on the inhalation and then leaving on the exhalation. Whichever one of those is easiest for you to settle gently on and to be able to feel that sensation the most And so I forgot to mention with the with your eyes gently gently closed but not fully closed so that the lights entering your eyes and your your gaze should be just going through the tip of your nose towards the ground in front of you. So just take a few moments just to focus on your breath. Notice its rhythm. Is it strained? Is it deep? Is it shallow?
So just focusing on the breath and try to leave behind any thoughts that you've come to this meditation with from your previous activities, worldly activities, thoughts about the day ahead. Just focus only on your breath. Use that as your anchor for your awareness and your concentration. Whenever thoughts arise, other than your breath, just be aware, be vigilant as soon as they arise, and just gently ignore them and come back to your breath. Depending on our practice, we have the habit of doing that can be more difficult than others. So you can just stay with that during this session if, you, if that feels best for you. And then we're just going to bring to mind and think about our motivation for this session. So whatever motivation we have personally, that's absolutely fine. But we should make sure that it's a positive motivation, that we're not doing this for our own benefit. Is the, the Mahayana the highest motivation? that we're doing this to benefit other beings. In particular, we, for the Mahayana motivation, this is for all sentient beings. But depending on our capacity, we just can think we're doing this for others, for our friends and our neighbors, our colleagues, our family, so that we can become a more calm, more grounded person. That we don't become overwhelmed by our emotions. Whenever we can, whenever we feel in a challenging situation, we can use this formal practice of calm abiding, focus on the breath to bring ourselves back to the, the moment and be aware of the moment and not follow our disturbing emotions. That's really the purpose of formal meditation so that in our daily lives we can be better people and have better relationships and we can also think we're doing this in general to bring more peace into the world and that may whatever activities we go on to do for the rest of our day may they be more composed or can more maybe we be more aware and more in control of our emotions
And just having this simple motivation in mind will make this session more beneficial for everyone, including ourselves. And now we're just going to try one exercise that I wanted to talk to you through about a breathing meditation just to help neutralize our mind and our thoughts. It's called the the nine round meditation. It's a simple term for it. I'm sure there's a more technical term. So in our, we can visualize that uh, within our body in the center of not in the very center towards the back where the spine is and just in front of the spine there's an, an a tube going from the the cranium of our head the the crown of our head down through the center of our body like i said towards the back uh, going down to our pelvic region. And then on either side of this are two, two other channels. You can imagine them like tubes, which are half the size of the one in the center, running either side from just behind the eyes with a hooked from just behind the eyes backwards around the inside of our head and going down either side of the larger tube of uh, energy tube down through the center of our body down to the pelvic region And these two tubes uh, open at the bottom. I can think like that at the start. And so on the first of the nine, nine rounds, they're divided into three. So we visualize that our nostril is connected with these energy tubes. And when we breathe inwards, so first focusing on the left nostril. When the breath comes in, the wind energy flows through that hooked upper part of that tube and flows down to the bottom. And we connect that tube with the right side. And then that breath comes and the energy rises up through that tube and then out of the hooks round at the top and through and out through our right nostril. So we just do that for three rounds. And we think on the out breath that all of our anger and aversion the energies which give rise to anger and aversion are exhumed from our body and the outbreath. And then for the third round, sorry, the second of the three round of the three rounds. Then we switch to the right side and the inhalation through the right nostril, going through that hooking and going through the right tube down the opposite side, the right side to the bottom. And then joining that tube with the left tube on the most left side. And then that breath and the energy rising up and out of our left nostril for three rounds. So you can either, either physically close your nostrils with your finger, 
the inhalation and switch to the other nostril for the exhalation. Or you can just merely focus the attention So then when we're breathing in through the right nostril and visualizing the right, the tube on the right side and exhaling and the energy flowing out through the left side, that energy is exhuming and carrying out all of the desire and attachment energy. All the energy that gives rise to desire and attachment is being exhumed from our body, or exhumed from our energy channels. So doing that for three rounds, uh, sorry, three breaths, three rounds of breath. Then on the third three rounds, so the total nine rounds, we then visualize our breath and we actually focus then on our breath entering our nostrils through both equally and likewise we visualize the tubes of light just behind our nostrils and our eye sockets uh, just behind our eye sockets hooked around the back of our head and down through the center of our body slightly behind the middle of our body and flowing down both tubes energy wind energy tubes equally and then we join those tubes at the bottom to the larger tube at the very center between the right and left, the one that's slightly thicker. Actually, it's double the size of the right and left tube. And then that wind energy rises up through that larger tube. And that gives rise to our blissful energy, feeling of peace and tranquility. We can visualize, or I like to visualize that that kind of fans the, the, the flames of our awareness. so that we become more aware and that wide inflamed awareness we just rest in that and feel very open and relaxed and free of any arising of any particular emotion or affliction. We find ourselves in a very neutral state. This is a good way to start your day, at least, if not any practice or meditation session with that exercise. So we're just going to do that now for the rest of the time that we have. So first, focusing on the in-breath through the left nostril, out through the right, going down through the body, on the left side, and up through the right side, and out through the right nostril. And then switching after three breaths, for three breaths from breathing in through the right, out through the left, and then breathing through for the third, third uh, three rounds, 
in through both nostrils, down equal sides of our of our body, and then joining in the center and rising up through the center. So I'm not going to comment on that anymore. You can just follow those instructions if you manage to catch them, or you can just focus merely just on your breath. So just focusing on the inhalation, exhalation, with your attention on your nostrils or your chest. Let any distracting sounds arise. Just bring that focus of attention back to your breath. If you need to adjust your posture because of any tension, because you've slowly began to fall out of an erect, conducive posture, just mindfully adjust. It's good to avoid the urge to fidget, to scratch. Or move your body in any way. But if you need to, you should do so mindfully. With the intention that this is going to enhance your focus.
and then just bringing your awareness back by taking three more breaths and arousing your awareness. Take three more deep breaths. Gently open your eyes. And then we're just going to dedicate that whatever concentration we've been allowed to, uh, we've been able to achieve in our focus and development of our awareness and avoid and avoid distractions. We dedicate that this may make us a more better neighbor, friend, partner, community member. that we may be able to continue our day with more awareness and less controlled by our afflictive emotions, and that there be more peace in the world, and that all beings may also find peace by the virtue of our meditation and practice today. Thank you everyone. Tashi Dile and Namaste. And I hope to see you again. Thank you for joining. May I have a wonderful day. <laughs>